hi guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be talking about how best to manage finances as a family i'm here with a financial advisor and you want to keep watching Today's set, we are at the Best Western Plus, the Athena Hotel, located in Bugolobi. It's amazing. The rooms are to die for. They have deluxe rooms, executive rooms, that you can just comfortably come, spend a good time with your loved one for honeymoon, or even, you know, just spending anniversaries together here. And their stuff is available for you 24-7. So please check out the Best Western and the Athena Hotel, located here in Bugolobi. Catch them on Instagram. set today we have Tony Mugisha if you've been following me on Instagram you know that we've been talking about planning for your future and today we want to just dive more into that conversation of how best to manage our finances better as a family so welcome Tony thank you Lisa for having me yeah so the viewers on YouTube want to know more about you who is Tony you know yeah yeah uh, well uh, uh, Tony is a married mm. uh, married with uh, four amazing kids I think this year would probably be 15 years. It would wow. be 15 years in marriage. Mm, amazing. Uh, yes. To one, Shelin Mugisha. Mm. Uh, my first born is 15 years. Okay. And my last born is 8 years. So I have three girls and one son. So you oh. can imagine the house is full of girls. Full of girls. Like emotions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, and I think for me, that's the most important part. Mm. Before the professional part, what I do. Yeah. Uh, professionally, I'm a financial advisor. Mm. Uh, I run a financial advisory company called Aton Capital. Mm. We we manage about to coming to 172 families now, wow. spread in different markets. Mm. And what do we do for those families? Mm -hmm. We help them to plan for the future. Yeah, ah, amazing. So he's an expert, and you know he's going to give us all the gems. So Tony, when we were growing up, yeah. My father had a corporate job. He was up there in management. Like we were living the life. Like everything was okay, you know. Lo and behold, one day, my father lost his job. And we went from 100 to like maybe 20, just like that. And I know lots of families are going through, you know, these scenarios because they happen. And we just want to know how can we, you know, manage those finances better, especially if there's loss of income. Yes. What do we need to do? Uh, Lisa, when you talk about uh, a loss of job, what mm. comes to us is uh, loss of income. Yeah. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, very many families, just like you said, mm. actually, not even now, even previously. Yeah. It's been a cycle. Mm. Um, I'm glad that now people do talk about it. And the interesting thing is, it is there's one that is temporary mm. and there's one that's permanent. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you talk about loss, because when you lose a job, Maybe it takes you about another eight, maybe 12 months, depending on what you do. You can yeah. probably be able to get something to do. Mm. But then what happens also when the situation is not temporary, it's permanent. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I would like to approach it that way because when we talk about income is our livelihoods, mm. everything happens when, the, when we have income. Yeah. So I think it's very, very important for us to think about income protection okay. that as we start to work, the first day we start to work mm. or the first time we start to get income can we think about that what should happen in case i lose this income yeah because that becomes a basis on you to do the entire planning because mm. your family uh, housing is dependent on income yeah there are food foods clothing uh, well-being mm. and and not only for the family but also other dependents and siblings and you know how African families yeah, can Yeah, you're looking after so many other people. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's very, very important that as you, as you have some income, you start to protect that income. Mm. And that's the whole conversation. What I do advise uh, most of my clients, I tell them that, listen, from the day you start to earn your income, start to worry about or start to think of a plan. Because mm. in life, you really want to be in control of certain things. Yeah. Okay? And we are so fortunate that, just give an example of your dad, uh, maybe so, for so many years there were no options there are mm. no solutions for that all the knowledge absolutely mm. and because finance is a very interesting thing people really kept it very private yeah. no one really wanted to go deep Just down into and you'd find that the matriarch in this case like your father would probably face up all this pressure that is coming what do I do next with yeah. all this but also then we didn't have options they didn't have options mm. you could have had the knowledge Okay, just like 
right now. There are very many things that are out there that we can't do yet here. Mm. So the knowledge is, you have the knowledge, mm. but there's no instrument or tool to help you to do that. Yeah. Today we have instruments okay. that can help us to, first of all, protect our income. Mm. Protect our income in two ways, because we said there's temporary and mm -hmm. there's permanent. permanent. When we say temporary, you've lost a job, you're probably going to go out and look for another job and maybe after six, 10 or 12 months or even two years, you're able to get back onto your feet and you're able to play catch up. Mm. The permanent part is where you say, okay, fine, I've been doing this job, but I'm permanently disabled. Disabled. Mm. Or I've gotten a critical illness yeah. that probably is going to take me four, five years to, to recover, to recover mm. and I'm not able to, you know, to do what I was supposed to do. Even companies, companies can only be patient for a specific period of time. Uh, like two months, they're yeah, like, please. Absolutely. Very good ones, probably just six months, and then they'll say, you know what, Lisa, let's pay you your one year. And then uh, buy. And, and, and you figure out things out. So yeah. uh, when you're planning for uh, loss of income, you need to plan for it both temporarily yeah. and also permanent. permanent. So what are those instruments you're talking okay. about that can help us? I'll give you a key scenario. I'll use your father's example. Yeah. Okay. So assuming that your father then was spending maybe a million shillings mm. to take care of the household. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Because in uh, survival, in terms of survival, you really want to look at the bare minimum. So yeah. I want to, to I want to assume that maybe the expense was about a million shillings. So I say, you know, I need a million shillings to take care of my family every month. Mm. When I apply that by twelve, that's twelve million. Twelve million. All right. Yeah. So if I want to protect my family livelihoods. For at least three years, because mm. if you're talking about temporary and, and, permanent. and permanent, so temporary you can say you know maybe three years. So we get the twelve times times, times three, three, which is about thirty-six, mm. and say fine. As I start to work this job, all right, mm. what premium can I pay that in case of a certain risk, mm. which we can always define depending on your advisor and how they structure it. Yeah. Can I get this income? Can mm. this income be replaced? Okay. So the, those are insurance options that you're able to take up today mm. that can help you in, ter in terms of... Uh, loss uh, of income. Loss of income. But mm. they can only protect you on the, on the, uh, the permanent part. The temporary, you need to put money aside. Mm. You, need to put, um, you need to put money aside to be able to help you during that time. Like saving. As you if, mean. Absolutely. As yeah. you figure things out. Mm. As we talk about the things like your emergency funds. Mm. Okay. All those are designed with the basis of hedging you on the temporary part. Yeah, and I remember when I just got married, Steve and I were just living life, enjoying life, you know, yeah. and this is something that uh, young couples need to think about because yes. you start your family and you're thinking, oh, we still have a lot of time to, to make money, yes. but actually you just never know. Absolutely. You know, so we're bowling until we realized one year into it, we had nothing to us. Yes. And then we, we, you know, we said being wiser about, yes. you know, saving, putting money aside. So please, if you're a young family, they are young <laughs> couple, start, start. Now, all right, Tony, you've told us you're a financial advisor. Yes. would love to hear your story. Like, where did you start from? Yeah. You know, did you um, have all this uh, in mind? You know, I've heard your story. Yes. You have, I'm sure, you know, that net worth is, uh, I don't even know, you know, but you have lots of information. So where did you start from? Did you have this information before? So walk us the journey to tell us what you've done for your family yes. so we can, uh, we can pick a thing or two. Okay. So, well, uh, Lisa, something about me is... Uh, I, I pretty much I thought about settling down early. Why? Because of the people that I was actually uh, spending much of my time with. Mm. Uh, probably these people are quite older than me. And I noticed that they kept saying that, you know, once you're able to settle down early, you pretty much uh, have an advantage over yeah. those that do later. Did I start out with this knowledge? No. Because mm. there are things they never talk about in school. Because when we finish school, no one ever prepares us. No one ever tells us that, you know, you go out, this is what you're going to expect, this is how much you're going to ask for, yeah. why am I actually going to ask for this much? Mm. We are just told, once you finish with school, look go for a job. out, look for a job That's and start it. life. Yeah. Okay? And same thing happened to me. So I went out and said working, uh, uh, side out for an eight to five. But as you move on this journey, you ask very many questions. Luckily enough, I think I had, uh, with my wife, who uh, I told you were soon celebrating 15 years of yeah. marriage, we started out all naive and we were saying, okay, fine. Yes, we have money to be able to take care of our day-to-day -day living. But what exactly do we, what is it for us in life? Mm. And I remember some of, uh, uh, sometime, because I kept picking information here and there. 
uh, at the end of the day, yes, we are working, but for what? Yeah. What exactly do we need? Mm. And we came to, um, we had one of the people we were working with in our lives, and he, he shared something very interesting. Tony and my wife is Shailene. Tony and Shailene, where do you plan to be at 50? Mm. Okay. Where exactly do you want to be at 50? Yeah. And in that approach, we said, okay, it's so broad just when you say, where do you want to be at 50? Yeah. Can we break it down? Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, fine. Because, I mean, we are together, so chances are high we want to start a family. Okay? Yeah. So what's in that family? What's in that family is me and her. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are going to definitely going to get children. children. Yeah. But that's not all. We have, I have my parents, she has her parents. Mm. She has siblings, I have siblings. Yeah. There are, rela there are relatives involved and there are friends as well. Mm. So when you talk about family, it's a whole broad concept. Yeah. And it, it is very, very critical. So when we look at forward back thinking, we say, okay, fine, immediate with us. By the time we are 50, how old will be our firstborn? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. How many kids shall we have? Mm. All right. There are things you can't control like the sex, but yeah. you know, but when you say, how many kids will you have? If we are 50, I think our first born needs to be here, our second born needs to be here, and third born needs to be there. Then that brings another conversation. Where will they be going to school? school. What will they be doing? Mm. You know? And then we went down to say, okay, work. I'm of a different profession, she's from a different prof profession. Yeah. So, okay, fine. So, are we going to work for the rest of our lives? Mm -hmm. All right? Are we going to do an eight to five? Okay, do we plan to have a business? Yeah. What's your passion? What's my passion? Mm. What do we think we shall be able to do? Let's imagine we are 50, okay? what will you be doing mm. all right mm. and same questions because it's a two-way traffic yeah so we said okay fine we definitely have to run our own business but what business yeah and then we went uh, to the health after that we also went to the spiritual part of it mm. what with what are we uh, wh what do we really believe in what yeah. do we think is going to change and the last one was really on community that conversation brought very many things mm. now did we do it in one day no, no. Right? Mm. Did we do it on our own? No. Mm. Because you need someone to be able to work with you on that journey. You. Because yeah. again, with education, every other day, a third of our lives are spent on education. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there when we leave school. We continuously need to keep improving ourselves. Either mm. people who have been able, who have this knowledge, yeah. or people who have been able to work with others. Mm. So I we based on those elements to plan for uh your for, family. for our family. Maybe for your for your viewers and you tell them that you're not going to go on a journey and start today and expect results in three yeah, months. Yeah, and I think that's the, the hardest thing. People look at, let's say Tony has arrived and they want to, to be like Tony yes. in two weeks, yes. which is not possible yeah. because it's a journey. Yes, that's, it's a journey. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. Yeah. And now that we're talking about planning for your family like you did, where should people start when yes. they are planning for their families? For me, where do I start is can I protect my family's livelihood at least the bare minimum for three years? Mm, 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 for me, mm. that is more important than actually buying land. Uh huh. Because people love land. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, it is more important than someone actually saying, mm. I'm going to buy land. Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, we have talked before and you, you called it the breadwinner's the dilemma. dilemma. Yes. Where if something happens to the breadwinner, everyone just starts to struggle. Yes. Yeah. So the first thing we need to always do when we start to work mm. is to put value on the people who bring in income. Amazing. If, we are, if you're the one working, the first thing you need to do is to put value to your life. Mm. To be able to say that if tomorrow I'm not able to work, mm. I'm able to have this income replaced. Mm. Not forever. Unfortunately, you can't do it forever. Yeah. It's only maybe three or five years. It's really a choice on mm. what do you want. Mm. So that's what you structure. That's the first thing you need to do. Okay. Now, once you do that, now, in a family setting, if you're two pe people working, you need to make sure that you protect that income, first thing. Yeah. Second thing is, as you're doing that, can you be able to create an emergency fund? There are two different things. Okay. An emergency fund mm. and protecting your income are totally two different things. Mm. Uh, maybe this is for your audience. Yeah. You cannot actually do the things on your own. Mm. You actually need a professional person yeah. to help you work on this on this journey. Yeah. Because like I've shared with you, the income protection and emergency funds are totally different. different. Yet they are the two critical things that you need to start out when you're talking about a family. Yeah. Now, what we're talking about here is finance. Mm. But there are about other seven spheres. Now you've noticed how finance is so broad. Yeah. Now you can imagine what's all in all the other seven spheres because there's something called the whole person concept. Whole person concept. Yes. Break it down for us. Whole person concept is 
there are the seven spheres of where and there's research on this mm. where for someone to be fully uh, uh what's the best way to what's the best word to say well when you work with uh, the high net worth market yeah you get to understand that it's not really about money mm -hmm. that money can actually be able to get you somewhere but there's a level of satisfaction that really money can't yeah uh can't maybe give. shatter or mm. give or and this whole person concept was developed when they said okay why would someone really accumulate so much and still not be satisfied in life yeah and a group of researchers went to do that journey that's how they came up with a a, a whole person concept mm. and it's the same concept we use as financial advisors a person to be fully satisfied in life they need to focus on a bare minimum of five mm -hmm. now the first one is relationships because mm -hmm. every human whether you have money or you don't have money yeah. relationships are very important relate, yeah. and the relationships are like i shared with you family relatives friends community community yeah. name yeah. it yeah all right mm. the second after uh, after that is health mm. because we have relationships but we need to make sure that we are also in the right full health uh, status in terms of physically and mentally and then the third one is education mm. we were discussing something about education mm -hmm. we spend almost a third of our lives in on school, education yeah. we finish school it doesn't end there yeah. it goes because go continuously to continuously keep improving you go on a journey to keep learning yeah one thing or the other mm. and then there is work or what we can call career mm. career itself has a different it has it's a whole as broad as finance yeah from where you start to it has different stages okay so going back there's relationships yeah health yeah education mm. Career, career and then finance comes because when after career then there's finance mm. because now you're able to have uh, some money some some money to be able to to you know put aside or choose a bit of investments or make mm. a few options and then there is yeah. service okay then the spirituality i told you about yeah. okay yeah so those are about seven seven yeah now each of those has a broad in-depth of each now what happens is for the people who work in eight to five, they'll focus on three. Mm. Most maybe they'll focus on relationships, mm. work, career, mm, mm. and what else? Mm. Health, maybe. Mm. People work eight to five. People yeah. who are in business, they'll focus on maybe finance mm. and relationships. Very few now. Majority of our work as financial advisors is to make sure that whoever we're advising as our customer, they are able to fulfill the at least a bare minimum of the five. Oh, the seven in the, in the seven. Yes. Mm. How do we use the financial resource they have to okay. make sure they you tap into all? Mm. But subconsciously, you, you can walk through life yeah. without actually ever understanding these seven spheres. Mm. And many people, many times, I sit down they with don't. people who are forty something years, mm. and and they tell you, listen, uh, it's I, just I, been career. It's, it's career. And now I, I feel I need to catch up. I need. Yeah. I, I feel I'm not. And they have priorities under those they are all important but mm. they also priorities yeah and, and we're all different mm. we are totally different in all those seven aspects yeah and we are all at different journeys yeah amazing and it's good that you mentioned that uh, it can be overwhelming all this information financial knowledge do you actually walk the journey with people yes. you know who want to do that our role is to make sure that we work with the the one who's starting out now mm. all through the to journey. maybe 90 yeah. but what happens to the one we meet at 35 what happens to the one we meet at 40 what happens to so we need to make sure either when we meet them we understand where they are we're able to catch up if yeah. we can 70 mm. percent of the work is the customer's work mm. our job is to make sure that we give you the roadmap yeah and that's amazing because i remember when uh, steve and i came to see you uh, tony is our financial advisor everybody yeah yeah and he's doing an amazing job and he w he's able to walk the journey with us and I remember you were able to see that mm, Steve I think what Steve wants is this and what Lisa wants is this so how do you actually meet in the middle to see that both your your needs are actually coming together to a, a unified you know objective uh, absolutely and it becomes very interesting and yeah. you know Lisa for us we are really excited we, when we see our customers starting out with them it's interesting when, now when the kids are coming of age mm. when the kids come of age and want to take uh, they want to uh, to take part in the family businesses in you know all the as as young adults it becomes very interesting because at some point in time there are conversations you want to have with your kids and you can't have them yeah there are conversations that your spouse wants to have uh, uh, even with 
the other spouse in terms of certain investment and the, the difficult conversations mm. and then there are dynamics where uh, they involve relationships in terms of siblings and yeah. so there are very many moving parts now what a financial advisor is able to do is he or she that you are using is able to understand the different family dynamics mm. and they're able to say okay fine how how can i have these conversations yeah. many times i've sat on a table and uh, with sons or daughters and they are telling me you know dad doesn't understand that i think through this this way yeah which probably they won't be able to tell them but i get to understand where they're coming from yeah and then be able to put it in context mm. so that this other party can also understand, understand to allow them to get to the same wavelength yeah. now you can't do that on your own no you can't yeah and and and, and that's why it is a very critical element in preserving wealth because mm. when you talk about all the seven elements the seven spheres mm. the driver of all the seven drivers of, of all those seven spheres is finance mm. that's why you see everyone thinks about finance money 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 yeah <laughs> whoever is playing in those parts will probably play with finance and mm. maybe one or two yeah all right but you always find that finance is an element there because it's a bigger driver mm. but then how do we use this finance to become a gift that can allow these people mm. to pursue whatever they want to pursue in life yeah. but also get satisfied by playing in all the seven spheres now that you've talked about investment hmm? tony imagine i have a hundred million now someone yes. may be there say oh there's a financial advisor here on lisa's channel i have a hundred million now where do i invest very good question and uh it depends on very many factors mm -hmm. see a person have a person having a hundred million and they are 55 now mm. is different from a person who has a hundred million and there are 30. Mm -hmm. now there are three variances that you should be able to base on an investment an investment is never based on a sum that's oh, an amount yes yeah we call them windfalls because sometimes we've got this hundred million maybe for an endorsement mm. like person like you probably could go and you endorse and then a hundred million come and say okay amen right here now mm -hmm. invest yeah and that's where we make the biggest the wrong, biggest mistakes uh -huh. it's because Investment is dependent on first how is your portfolio standing mm. before anything mm. because it has to be a building block. But I think for me the most important thing would be it's dependent on your portfolio yeah. first and foremost how it's standing. Mm. Second, it was dependent on your risk appetite. Okay. And sometimes a hundred million is it for you alone? Is it for you as a family? Is it for Are you, you as with your brother? Yes. Yeah, so well, well, you know. <laughs> so when you say a hundred million without me getting down into the, the details, detail. so I understand it's hundred million. Is it listeners? Mm. Uh, is it Lisa's and Steve's? Steve, yeah. Is it Lisa's sisters and is it yeah. Lisa's in law? We need to understand with 100 million yeah. and who are the parties who are interested in this. Mm. That one makes a good investment and a bad investment mm. because uh, without you understanding that, chances are high that you're going to make a wrong decision. Yeah. So, for your viewers out there, if you ask me that, what's that, where, where can I put 100 million? For a person who's 45 right now, 100 million can be in something else. The person who's 29 right now, 100 million can help them with something. So you're saying age also is a factor? It's a very, age is a very big factor. Mm. Age, portfolio standing, yeah. risk appetite. Yeah, and, and Tony, when we're discussing, uh, you know, in preparation for our Instagram, we're telling, telling the viewers different things, you mentioned some key things there. You said from 25 to a certain age, there are certain um, asset classes yes. that we need to be in. First, tell them about asset classes. Okay, all right. Well, for the viewers who are not there, I hope, I hope these guys should, should be tuning in most of Please, the time. If you're on YouTube and you're not on Instagram, <laughs> please, you're missing out a lot. Just repeat it. <laughs> okay, for the purpose of uh, Lisa's request, yeah. there are only five asset classes that you'll ever invest in anywhere in the world. Mm. So any investment you're going to make falls into those five asset classes. And the first is property. For the longest time, it's been one of the longest assets that mm. has been able to age against inflation. Yeah. Then there is equities. Equity is where you have shareholding in a company. Mm. Okay. It could be a gig that you have. Mm. It could be a business you have with friends. Yeah. It could be like a listed company, like recently one of the telecoms listed. I think another is listing soon. Mm. That is under equities. Yeah. Then third is um, uh, commodities. In Uganda's yeah. context, anything to do with farming falls under commodities. That's uh, if your trees. If you're animals, planting trees, mm. if you're animals, maybe poultry, whichever, yeah. that falls under commodities. Mm. Then there is cash. Okay. Mm. If one's bonds. Bonds is where the government borrows from the public and gives some paper value. So all, all, all investments you have fall under those five asset classes. If you think that's not correct, you need a financial advisor to be able to guide you. Guide. The five asset classes, let's put them here. Then we have the different uh, stages in life yeah. which I think you shared mm. and why are they important because how you pick them along the journey 
determines how you progress. Mm. Okay, so we have 25 to 35, yeah. which is the first stage of life. Why? Mm. Because in Uganda, pretty if someone starts to work at the age of 25. Around, yeah. Around there about. Mm. There are other markets where it's different, like the developed markets start about 18 because uh, those actually start working earlier. But we look, we are, we are in Uganda, so we're talking about Uganda, yeah. all right? So there's 25 to 35, then there is 35 to 45, which is the second stage in life. Mm. And then there's 45 to 55, which is the third stage in, in life. And then there's plus 55. Mm. Okay, you notice it has come down. Initially, you would say retirement, you go at 60. Yeah. It has come down, yeah. okay? There's a saying in retirement that the f best way to start, the best start time to start for, for planning for retirement is the day you start to work. Mm, mm, mm. And actually there's a model in financial planning where, where actually you put aside 20% of your income to feed into retirement, retirement. planning. Mm. Okay, and I'm going to shed more light, but not to lose this. So we have here the different asset classes. Yeah. And then we have the different stages. Ages, yes, now, ages. how you pick, because in the stages of life, there are many things that happen, not only investments. I mean, life has to be lived. Education mm. has to happen. How we play in community, you know, and all the seven spheres. You notice how all they interlink each other? Yeah. All right. So mm. the different stages of life from 25 to 35 is probably that's when maybe you're going to probably settle down, meet a spouse. Get you know, married. You know, get Children. married. Mm, Absolutely. Mm. That is if what, from one person to another, another person would say, you know what? For me, 25, 35, maybe I'm going to focus on career and education, whichever way you want to do it. Yeah. But I want to be very precise that there are also some blueprints that have been tested. Mm. So you can choose to pave your way, which, you know, with life people say, you know, do as you wish, go out and do what you love and yeah. all those things. But yeah. in my place, in terms of financial planning, there are also models that would give you success ratio of about 75%. Yeah. You can only get those from a financial advisor. That's why we're here. <laughs> so please listen to Tony today, guys. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So how you get these different asset classes and how you spread them, because now, now we're talking about investment. Yeah. So there are assets that you should be able to play. Now, between 25 and 35, you need to be playing more or less in assets, which is the cash assets, mm. okay, which you're building your your value to your life in yeah. terms of life insurance, mm. uh, a lot of knowledge you're investing in yourself in yeah. terms of learning. Uh, you're picking up uh, the different instruments, which are cash, things that you can liquidate within 78 hours. Mm. That is what should happen between 25, 25 35, 35 mm. and you're building a firm foundation cash assets or cash assets mm. so you find that many people for it's really about cash assets and equity within that stage mm. okay now the second stage is when you can play you can start playing in a bit of property in the second stage in the second stage mm. you need to start playing bit of. again there are people all of us are different yeah there are those that are born privilege and they don't have to worry about certain things mm. like but i'm giving a concept for a person who's starting from nothing yeah layman a layman you yeah. know because i mean the, today we have 25 years old who have properties who have yeah. and it's different yeah but what, yes, what i'm trying to share here is starting from scratch mm. that's the approach as you go into your second stage which is 35 to 45 you start picking up a bit of fixed asset not too much yeah but what's guiding you you remember our portfolio yeah. now comes to play because mm. At the second stage in life, you, you de then need to look at your portfolio. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Then as you head towards the third stage of life, then you can add the other asset classes. No better limitation. It's up to your risk appetite. As you head plus 55, as you head toward 55, then you start to get worried about certain things. Yeah. You see, Lisa, there are, there are five living abilities of a human being. Mm -hmm. And it is the basis under which retirement planning was structured yeah personal hygiene we mm. wake up and shower mm. all right <laughs> yeah. you know some people forget you know yeah. we forget that this is uh, yeah we eat mm. we go to the toilet mm. we move from one place to another to another mm. uh dressing yeah you know we, we all dress mm. you know as soon as you can't do any of the two yeah that's when in the developed market, they say you need care. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. Now, so sometimes it is age that gets us there. Yeah. Sometimes it's not age that gets us there. Mm. It is catastrophes that yeah. happen. Things that we do not have control over. Mm. So would it be ideal that you plan for it when you start or you plan for it when, when you're, you're retiring? Mm, mm, mm. Because then people used to plan for it at retirement. They would say, you know, after 55, I may not be able to do this. I may yeah. not be able to do it. Why? Because my body will probably be wearing down. And so I need to plan this. Because for, for a person to do that for you, you need to pay. 
true. Yeah. Is it making sense? Yeah. Mm. So for the people listening there, the number of how you pick up these different asset classes, the most critical things is the different stages of life. If there's anything you want to take away from this, yeah. understand the different stages of life because under that there are activities that happen. Under those activities is only investment. Um, investment is only for the finance component. Mm. But there are very many things that happen that need to be in place along that. So yeah. you choose exactly because life is about choices. Mm. So every single day we are making decisions, and whichever decisions we are making, either taking us behind or bring us back. Mm. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes, sometimes we know. Yeah. But what better way to do it is get someone because you're busy. Mm. Your, your job is not really figure those things out. Yeah. There are people whose job is to do to that. To do that. So and why not why, reach them out? Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what financial advisors we mm. do. So what are some of those two, three things that people need to think about, you know, to prepare for retirement better? Yes. What are those tools, those policies, if, if any, you know, that they need to think about now as we are still young? Yes. Mm. Okay. The thing is, what is certain? There are four things that are certain in life. Yeah. You surely die. You fall sick. Mm. Your children will go to college school, or school. You retire. You retire. Mm. So those four things you need to plan for. But since you've asked me about retirement, in, in all this conversation, actually, we talked about all the four. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we talk about retirement, I think the most important thing is, what does retirement mean to you? Yes. Because yeah, we talk about retirement, people think retirement is stopping to work. Mm. That's what's, okay? yeah. Yet some people are planning to get their NSSF and start a business. <laughs> Yeah, you're not and retired. I think it's retirement. No. The biggest question I think for your viewers today is what does retirement mean to you? Because mm. that becomes a basis for, for us to start planning. Yeah. And again, using the other forward back thinking approach, mm. you can use it same for retirement planning. Again, you can't do it on your own. You need someone to help you or guide you yeah. to be able to do that. Mm. So once we're able to understand what does retirement mean, because for someone retirement may mean going to the ranch and sleeping and waking up to see animals. Another one, retirement would mean traveling the entire world yeah. and, and let me tell you something uh, Lisa we, th we talk about retirement for people who are doing eight to five mm. let me tell you something it's even a bigger problem for business people yeah yeah today I fight with many of my clients where I tell them you need to step back to allow the other people rising generation mm. to take part because you, you you're becoming a hindrance so mm. when we talk about retirement plans not only on the eight to five <laughs> career yeah. yeah it's not only career it's also in family businesses it's yeah. very very critical mm. and for families that have been able to preserve wealth one of their strengths is to be able to plan and have a very clear retirement strategy yeah. so for a businessman you find that he has not been planning his retirement mm. so he's retired he's been picking whatever he wants to do he's picking Pick from, from the business. business so without him there he feels Absolutely. like yeah, I'm not my retirement <laughs> is, is, is not it's not planned for yeah so how you plan for retirement planning for a business is different from how you do retirement planning for a person who's who who, who is doing an eight to five mm. senior executive it's totally different yeah i would like to know how do we actually build generational wealth because I don't know if Ugandans, you know, from your experience, are there Ugandans who have built generational wealth like, from your experience? Yes, uh, just to give the, the audience confidence, I think we, we manage families that I think in third generation in Uganda. Wow. Uh, there are great companies, I, I mean, great families that have been able to, to walk this journey. Mm. And we have Ugandan family businesses that have interest in different markets. Yeah. Yeah, so yes, there are some uh, families that are able to walk mm. that journey. The thing is, the finance space is a very private thing that yeah. very few people really want to, to come out share. there to share and but yes there are families that are doing that okay back to the question mm. first thing is people need to understand it's a process yeah. that's the first thing mm. that it will not self-execute it yeah. will not take up one day because today people write wheels and believe that it it that's will self-execute so yeah. you know i'll get out and leave everyone to on their own mm. and they think to self-execute Generation wealth doesn't work like that. It's a process. Mm. It doesn't self-execute, mm. and it requires professionals to do it. Yeah. By professionals, we mean some financial advisors, uh, tax planners. Mm. You need lawyers. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is. It, it, it is some. It's a structure that you need to put together. In place. People think that uh, people inherit only wealth. Mm. People inherit debt. Yeah, that's true. You know, and, and that's the honest fact. People don't yeah. want to talk about that. But people, when people talk about inheritance mm. or succession planning, they think that it is only wealth that someone... Because well, yeah. one thing I need to tell you is everyone has something to give. Mm. Everyone has something to give. So 
you will either give wealth or you will give debt. Mm. But as we conclude, just what are some of those two or three things that we need to uh, let the viewers know? So they, they, if they to pick something, what are those three things? But I think if there are two things they need to take away. Yeah. The first one is the whole person concept. Mm. It's one thing that is not really talked about. I've been in financial spaces, people are talking about saving, talking about, oh, it's not that it's bad. Yeah. But I think it's also high time we talk about the whole person awesome. concept. Awesome, yeah. Second is you need to be very keen very keen on the different stages of life mm. and wh how you utilize them yeah it's very 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 important mm. 25 to 35 35 to 45 45 to 55 and 55 plus yeah. if you're lucky and you can live to 100 years amazing amazing yeah so if someone wants to reach out to you you know yes. they want to speak to you as a financial advisor how yeah. do they reach you our offices are on uh, fourth floor akasha mall mm. We, we're a bit active as well on social media. We, yeah. We're trying to be active, mm. uh, both on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook mm. and on Instagram, Instagram. recently yes. because of Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on Twitter, we try to m as much as we can to share some content when time allows. Mm. Uh, but Lisa has our contacts. You can check out our website, mm. which is uh, Capital. Aton Capital is E I T O N mm. Capital one word so mm. atoncapital.com Amazing thank you so much Tony for being here if you need more information I had some lives Instagram lives with Tony and some story takeovers on, over on my Instagram page check out the highlight called planning for your future please get all that information I hope you've been you know blessed by this video leave a comment below how are you planning financially for your future. My name is Lisa Kusima and as always I'm here to inspire.